the Lao government has announced its intentions to attract enough foreign investors to build close to 30 new dams by 2020. Thailand is still the biggest consumer of Lao hydroelectricity. New power purchase agreements for four hydro projects, totaling almost 1,500 megawatts, are expected to be signed between Thailand and Laos before the elections. Thai companies, such as the electrici Electricity Generating Company of Thailand, or EDCO, Ratchaburi, and GMS Power, are some of the main dam builders in Laos. And Thai financial institutions, including Thai Exim and private banks, are also important players. Recognizing the significance of this bilateral relationship, in September, officials from Thailand and Laos gathered with the World Bank at a high-level forum on sustainable hydropower development. There, they affirmed the need for social and environmental standards for hydropower projects. This was an important dialogue at which commendable commitments were made by both countries. The Thai Energy Ministry, project developers, financiers, and the Electricity Generating Authority of Thailand, or EGAT, acknowledge their responsibility to ensure that the Lao dams they support meet international environmental and social standards. Across the Mekong, the Lao government affirmed the importance of strengthening its regulatory institutions and policies to secure maximum benefits for Lao people. This follows on the Lao government's adoption in 2005 of a national policy on the environmental and social sustainability of the hydropower sector. Yet, with the number of proposed dams and the track record of past projects, there are significant risks that these commitments won't keep pace and be translated into timely action. Environmental and social standards are important, but implementation is key, of course. Right now, Laos' largest project, Nam Tun Tu, is facing a number of challenges in that regard. I've just visited the project area and will briefly highlight some key issues. Erhard Floter will elaborate further uh, during his presentation. We're also happy to answer questions following during the discussion. Downstream, the Nam Tun Tu project will cause food and income losses for more than 120,000 people who depend on the Sebang Phai and the Nam Tun rivers. Fish, a staple food item, will decline. There will be more flooding, which will likely impact people's ability to grow rice. There will also be increased erosion along parts of the river and water quality problems. Implementation of Nam Tun Tu's downstream livelihood restoration program, supported by the company, has been initiated in only about 20% of the more than 220 villages that will be affected in two years when power production begins. Nam Tun Tu's official monitors, the panel of experts, state in their September 2007 report, quote, the problem with the downstream program at this point is that many of the impacts of the project will be felt well before comprehensive countermeasures are in place. The panel of experts also points to the program's short and long-term funding gaps, the protein deficiency that is likely to emerge when fish supplies decrease, and notes that, quote, the existing programs do tend to look more like a series of essentially unrelated, if useful, subprojects than the product of a coherent plan. Furthermore, the Nam Tun Tu Power Company and the Lao government have still not reached an agreement on biomass clearance from the reservoir area. Time is running out, with just over four months remaining before the onset of the rainy season and reservoir impoundment. While the high-value timber has been removed, additional vegetation and biomass clearance is critical to minimize water quality problems in the reservoir and downstream and reduce greenhouse gas emissions from the reservoir. Resettlement on the Nakai Plateau has also suffered from significant delays, although progress has been made in the construction of resettlement infrastructure in the last several months. But the key question remains, how will these 6,200 resettlers feed their families and earn an income when two-thirds of the land they used for farming, animal grazing, and collecting forest products is underwater. Nam Tun Tu is just one of four 
existing or proposed dams in the Nam Tun Nam Kading River Basin. About 40 kilometers downstream from Nam Tun Tu, the Thai Norwegian Tun Himbun hydropower project has been generating electricity for Thailand since 1998. A report released last month by the Norwegian NGO Fivas details increasingly severe flooding along the Hai and Hinbun rivers over the last nine years, largely due to water releases from the project. Around 30,000 people have suffered declines in fisheries and other aquatic resources for which the company has paid no compensation. They have also been forced to abandon their paddy fields due to the repeated loss of wet season rice crops. The flooding has caused water contamination, skin diseases, drinking water shortages, and death of livestock from drowning and disease. Yet the project operators, Statkraft of Norway and GMS Power of Thailand, are now proposing an expansion to account for the reduction in flows caused by Nam Tun Tu's development upstream. The Tun Hinbun expansion project would double the diversion to the Hai and Hinbun, making life for tens of thousands of people living along those rivers increasingly intolerable. This new project does not include adequate measures to mitigate the flooding and erosion problems, nor does it provide compensation to address villagers' past and ongoing losses. The Tun Hinbun expansion project is one of the four power purchase agreements with Thailand that are expected to be signed before the end of this year. But it should not go forward until and unless the company has resolved the problems with the existing project. Murray Watson will discuss these issues in more detail. Finally, another one of these four projects, the Nam Tun 1 dam, would be built downstream from Nam Tun 2 and Tun Hinbun just about 30 kilometers from the Mekong confluence. This Thai-Malaysian dam, sponsored by Gamuda of Malaysia and Edco, Thailand, would be built in the middle of Laos's remote Nam Kading National Protected Area, an area classified by conservation organizations as one of 35 global biodiversity hotspots. Its reservoir would effectively divide the protected area into destroying large swaths of riverine and terrestrial wildlife habitat. Hunting and poaching pressures are already on the rise, and even before an environmental impact assessment was approved, or has been approved, roads constructed for the project have reached the National Park. Reports indicate that more than 3,500 people will be displaced to make way for the Nam Tun One Reservoir, and that communities downstream can expect decreases in water flows, water quality, and fisheries. Nam Tum One's economic viability has also been questioned, especially considering the development of the Tun Hibun expansion project upstream. Given Nam Tum One's significant social and environmental costs, many of which simply cannot be mitigated, this project undermines the sustainable hydropower pledges made by the Thai and Lao governments in September. The Tun Hibun expansion project, with its failure to address the legacy of downstream livelihood losses, also fails to meet these standards. Committing to and implementing high social and environmental standards benefits all parties. It reduces the financial and reputational risks for Thai project developers and their financial backers. It shields the Thai government from criticism that it has externalized the social and environmental cost of its energy consumption to its Lao neighbors. Most importantly, it reduces the potentially devastating effects of these projects on Lao people and the threat they pose to the Lao government's poverty reduction plans. New hydropower projects that fall short of these standards, such as the Tun Hinbun expansion project and Nam Tun One, should be dropped. Thank you. Okay. Thanks so much.